So you want to catch a double figure bream. Well, the good news is that I think for most of us these days, wherever you live in the UK, that's a fairly achievable thing to do. There's a lot of waters around at the moment, especially gravel pits, I'd say, that have got plenty of bream in them from 10 to maybe 14 pounds, you know, real nice, big, impressive fish. And really the key to catching big bream is to find a venue where you've got a good head of the fish of a size that you're interested in. They're almost like a different species when you're fishing a venue that's really low stocked. They become very unpredictable and you can have a lot of blanks before you catch. But find a venue with good head of fish and you shouldn't struggle too much. Now I use very simple tactics um, for most of my bream fishing, but especially if I'm fishing for you know, a good head of fish. And it revolves around the good old fashioned method feeder a lot of the time. I prefer to use the trilobe type feeders and I like the ones that have got the weight along the length of the feeder. So when they come to rest on the bottom, they rest like that, flat on the bottom. They don't sit up if they've got the weight mostly in the nose, they'll sit like that. And you've got more chance of getting line bites because your line's uh, lifted off, your main line's lifted off the bottom. And then a bit different to if I was setting the method feeder up for carp fishing, I use a slightly longer hook length, so 8 to 10 inches, and normally that's 10 pound fluorocarbon, which is a lot stronger than you need just to catch bream to be honest, but the chances are you might catch some big carp as well, and if you hook one you want to get it out. Most of the venues I fish are probably carp venues primarily, and they see a lot of boilies and, and a lot of corn these days as well and I use that to my advantage in terms of hook baits that I use. So I'll either use a 12 millimeter boilie and um, one of my favorites is the tiger nut um, that works brilliantly for all species in, in my opinion uh, and very very instant and then I'll just top it with a little piece of plastic corn just as a bit of a sighter and to make it almost weightless almost into a wafter and that's normally with a size 10 hook. And, and I've had some big carp on that, you know, if you hook a big carp, which you're more than likely to do, you're going to have a good chance of landing it on that gear. And so that's the rig, very simple tactics. I'll find a swim where I think uh, the bream are, are frequenting. Normally I'll fish at night, but uh, you don't necessarily have to fish in the dark. And um, fish method feeders. Now, key to, again, key to all specimen fishing um, is to try and be as accurate as you can. Use a marker rod, try and find some features. For bream, the one thing I would say about bream, I've caught them over all sorts of lake bed, but the one thing I'm trying to, to do is avoid weed. They don't like to be amongst weeds, so I'll try and find a fairly clear spot. If there's any gravel bars or gullies or anything like that, a bit of feature that the fish can move up and down, so much the better. But you might not find that, and you might have to create your own little feature just with a bit of bait. But Keep everything accurate, you don't have to use a lot of bait. And so we'll have a look next at the feed I put in and then what I'm going to mould around the feeder. Now I must admit I'm probably different to the vast majority of uh, bream anglers in that I tend not to use too much bait. Um, the sort of status quo really is that you, you fill it in with loads of ground bait and loads of particles and the shoulder bream will come into the swim and sit there long enough for you to catch them. My experience is it doesn't matter how much bait you put in, you're not going to hold a shoal and if they decide they want to move on, they will do. And by putting too much bait out, all you can do is limit your chances of catching. Now if I am going to bait, what I'll do is I'll try and pre-bait a bit and get the fish used to finding some food in the swim. And that will encourage them to visit perhaps a bit more often and maybe stay a little bit longer. But a lot of the time I think pre-baiting and um, Putting too much bait in when you're fishing can really count against you, so it's not something I particularly do. Try and find the fish, find a feature, and then fish it accurately with a small amount of bait is the way I approach it, and uh, that's, that's how I prefer to fish. But I like a quality bait, um, and what I tend to do is these days for my loose feed, is I don't use ground bait, I tend to use just a lot of small particles. So, the base of the mix will be some three millimeter halibut pellets. Bream absolutely love halibuts and um, they'll sit on the bottom, although they're quite light in the water, the shoulder bream moving around the swim, it will move them around but not too much. They'll tend to sit on the bottom fairly well, slowly break down the three mils, releasing a nice trail of flavor. 
and if there's any bream around that will hold them and they'll graze on those for quite a long time. Now because my hook bait's quite big, 12 mil boilie and a piece of plastic corn or it could be two or three pieces of corn on the hair, it's quite big relative to those small pellets. I'll also put in about 25% of 8 mil pellets as well just to give them a, a, some larger food items in there trying to encourage them to feed on bigger food and not just sort of browse on the small pellet. And if I'm using corn, then I'll put a little bit of corn and it will literally will only be a pinch in the mix as well. I don't want to put too much corn in because, I, again, I don't think it does you any favours. I'd much rather that the hook bait stood out a little bit, which I think increases my chances of an inquisitive bream coming in and picking it up fairly early and you're getting a quicker bite than if there's too much bait out there. And if I've got any, um, which I generally have in the bait freezer, is just some dead maggots. And again, I don't go too mad. Um, and I wouldn't be phased, it wouldn't worry me if I didn't have any, but I'll put a couple of handfuls of dead maggots in the mix as well. And you can add chopped worm, other particle baits, as, as you like. But um, keep it fairly simple, there's no reason why you should overcomplicate it really. And like I was saying, I don't put too much in. I try and fish accurately, and rather than ball it in with lots of ground bait, what I tend to do is use a spod or a spom, and I'll maybe put six to 10 spoms over each rod. So if I'm fishing with two or three rods, you know, that's a fair spread of bait, and I'll probably keep all three rods fishing on the same area. So it's a reasonable amount of bait. It's enough to attract the fish in and hold them long enough for me to catch a few. And if they're really feeding hard, I'll catch a lot. But on the tougher days, when they're not feeding so hard, then I've still got a chance of nicking one or two bites, where if I feel it, fill it in with bait, the chances are that I'll probably be blank because I'll get lots of line bait bites, get frustrated because the fish are moving through, but there's just too much food out there um, for them to eat in one go. And the chances of me catching one are um, you know, much more reduced. So that's what I put in as the loose feed. So next I'll run through what goes on the feeder. So right, the method feeder. Now I look at that as being the cherry on the cake. It's just designed to attract the bream to that hook bait. And so what I want is again, small amount of ground bait molded around that feeder. And I want it to be quite slow in breaking down because I want that attraction. If I'm fishing at night, I might not be casting that regularly, maybe once an hour, maybe once every couple of hours. And so I don't want it to break down really quickly and wash away. I want that to be, again, something that is gonna attract the bream in and then they're gonna find that little hook bait not too far away. And again, it stands out and they think, oh, what's that? And pick it up, bream on the bank. Now, the ground bait I've used, um, well, I think probably since it first came out, was the marine halibut. And to be honest, I've tried lots of different ones, but it's really, really effective. Um, and again, made from ground halibuts, pellets, bream absolutely love them. So don't use anything else, just that on its own. And again, I'm not gonna to use too much of it because it's literally just going around the feeder. So I'm gonna use certainly less than half a bag is all I'll make up at one time. If I'm having a real blinding session and I'm catching a lot of fish, I'll make some more up, but um, I'm not gonna make up and, and waste any that I don't uh, think I'm gonna need. That goes in the bucket. Now, there's a couple of additives that I like to add to the water uh, that goes in the ground bait, and I find the easiest way to do that is to put about a pint of water in a big, you know, 2.2 pint uh, maggot tub. And then I can then judge how much of the other liquid additives I put in based upon that amount of water. I'm not going to use it all, but uh, I'll use some of it. So the first one it goes in, again, halibut oil. Don't need a lot of this, but again, it's just boosting that. Bream love halibut pellets, absolutely love it. So anything I can do to boost that halibut flavor is a real good one. And it's literally, it's probably about a tablespoonful. I don't bother measuring it exactly. As long as it's roughly about that amount, that's fine. And then the one thing I would say, and this probably be makes more difference to me than it does to the bream, to be honest, but I find 
ground baits that have got a lot of pellet in it have quite a bit of taste. So what I do like to add, and it's a proper old school bream attractor as well, is a little bit of liquid molasses. And again, roughly the same amount. I don't bother measuring it out, but roughly a tablespoonful. And that goes into the water as well. Now, neither of those two liquids mix very well with the water, so give them a real good stir up. Just to make sure that it doesn't clump up and you haven't got any uh, really strong bits. It's well mixed. And then it's just a case of slowly and taking your time mixing up the ground bait. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to use anything like all of that water, but it's just that starting off with a pint of lake water is a nice, easy measure to judge the amount of the other additives you're going to use. So take your time. That's way too dry, but I can always add more. I can't take it out. Keep mixing it. Having a nice bucket really helps with a flat bottom. Allows you to get your hand in properly. Really mix it up. That's in, but it's still a bit too dry. So I'm just going to add. And again, take your time. Don't put too much in at once. You still use probably less than half of that water in there. Keep mixing it. It's still a bit drier than I want because I want it to be quite sticky. Stickier than you'd use certainly in like a cage feeder or even if you were sort of carp fishing with a flat method. Because I want it to break down quite slowly. I'm not going to bury the hook bait into the ball of feed. I'm going to leave it hanging loose on the cast. So even if the ground bait doesn't break down off the feeder, it's not going to impede the bream. They still can pick the hook bait up, no problem at all. So we're getting there now. We're not far off. And one of the beauties of this mix is it does mix really, really easy. Even though I've got that sticky molasses in there, doesn't uh, start making lumps and get really lumpy. I don't mind lumps. You know, I'm fishing for big, big bream, you know, and there might be some nice tench and some big carp around. A few lumps in the ground bait really isn't going to make any difference. And in fact, if you put some in some water, you'll find that the lumps actually break down quite quickly anyway. So, I've got a mix that when I squeeze it fairly hard, binds together, it still breaks down. Now what you find is if I leave that now for about 10 minutes, it will soak up the liquid and it'll actually probably turn out to be a little bit dry and I'll have to add a little bit more water. And keep doing that, keep an eye on it. And once you've got it right, I like to use a bucket with a solid lid just so I can keep it in there, keep the air out and stop it from drying out. So again, especially if you're fishing overnight, that's quite a few hours, you don't want your ground bait drying out. So look after it, keep it dry, stop it from drying out, and uh, you won't go far wrong, which makes life easier. So I'll leave that now for about 10 minutes, and then probably add a little bit more water and it'll be ready to go. So 10 minutes have gone by, I've probably been setting the rods up, getting organised for the night, and just put my ground bait to one side and just let it rest and soak up the liquid properly. And as expected, soaked up the liquid, and it's binding okay but it, it just needs a little bit of extra moisture just to get it to the perfect consistency. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of the liquid. Probably just needs a touch at this stage, it won't need very much. And I'm just aiming for that quite sticky mix that's going to bind onto the feeder fairly well. Now I think you'll notice is I haven't put any particles, any pellets, any dead maggot, any corn, nothing in this ground bait. It's there just as an attractor for the hook bait. And I don't want any feed in it because that's already gone out fairly accurately. You know, 10 spoms, to be fair, if I'm fishing at 60 or 70 yards, that might be over the area of your average sort of living room, I suppose. So it's fairly spread out and the bream will come through and a shoal of bream will, again, the wash of the big fish moving through the swim will, will move it around as well. So it's going to spread out. And then all I'm looking for is to have 
this ball of ground bait breaking down in the middle with the hook bait sat next to it, just as an attractor, just as a way of, to make it easier for the bream to follow my hook bait. And there we go, and the kind of consistency I'm looking for is one that will stick easily to the feeder. Don't, I'm not worried, it's not as if I'm fishing a flat method feeder for carp on a shallow commercial and I want it to break down really quickly. This is almost the opposite. If it takes longer to break down, it really doesn't matter because it's probably going to be out there for an hour or even more. So don't worry about it breaking down quite slowly. And there we go, it's quite a weighty. You're going to need a fair old feeder rod or probably better still a light carp rod to be able to cast that out. It weighs about four ounces, something like that. Um, best not to go too light. You can use Avon rods or sort of still water type bream and tench rods, but you might find that with a big weight like that, you're better off and you'll be able to cast further and more accurately by stepping up to a carp, light carp rod. And there you go. I'll leave the hook length free because I want the hook bait to, you know, position slightly away from the ball of ground bait and, and risk any chance of it getting stuck in, uh, in the ground bait or point getting masked. So it's important to clip up, hit the clip, and that will push the hook length away from the feeder and as it comes down, we'll make sure there's no chance of it tangling. And then that ground bait's gonna take a good hour, probably closer to two hours to completely break down. And that's what you want because you don't want it breaking down quickly and then the bream coming through and dispersing it all over the place. I want that to be the cherry on top of the cake. So there you go, that's the way I would approach my bream fishing these days on, on a lake where I'm expecting to catch you know, one, two, maybe anything up to ten or a dozen fish on a really good session in the night. Um, it's quite simple, not going to cost you a fortune, doesn't use a massive amount of bait, but it's very, very effective. So if you're looking to try and catch a nice big bream, why not give it a go? Thanks very much for watching.